Is Nadal the GOAT? If you're a tennis fan, at some point in your life, you've been sucked into the GOAT debate between the big three of Roger Federer, Rafael Nadal, and Novak Djokovic. The big three have dominated the tennis courts on all surfaces, and even though there is a surge of younger players challenging their status at the moment, they are still sitting comfortably on the tennis throne, and the biggest proof of that is Rafael Nadal's recent Australian Open Championship. In six months, Rafa got off the crutches, got back in form, and was ready to compete on the biggest tennis stage in the world. But despite his skill, it's this killer warrior mentality that keeps Rafa relevant. You just simply cannot count him out. This is why Rafael Nadal is now officially the clear favorite of the greatest tennis player of all time. Be sure to stick around to see how he lifted himself to that status. After a 2003 second round loss at the US Open, Rafa said it all. I'm a fighter, I fight all the time. Almost 20 years and 21 Grand Slam titles later, that warrior mentality is still at the core of his game. Seriously, if Chris Evans is Captain America, Rafa should be Captain Espana. I wouldn't bet against him if the two actually faced off. And speaking of superheroes, let's get to the heroic achievement of his 21st Grand Slam. Rafa's tennis season officially began on January 3rd with the start of the ATP 250 tournament in Melbourne. This would be the first tournament he participates in since his foot treatment, and even though it's only a 250 tournament, it's obviously meant a lot to him. Getting wins under your belt is very important for any tennis player, especially before a grand slam. It gives you the confidence you need, it gets you into competitive form, and in Nadal's case this year, it gives you an idea of where your body is and what it can accomplish. If you were an Nadal fan, watching him play this tournament would have given you plenty of reasons to be hopeful. The Matador seemed to be firing on all cylinders and managed to bulldoze his way to the title without dropping a set. Fun fact, this tournament would be the first Rafa wins in Melbourne since his maiden Australian Open in 2009. A win like this is exactly what a champion like Nadal would need to build on a Grand Slam push. And then the Australian Open started, without Novak. Djokovic, but let's not get into that drama in this video. Nadal seemed to be in excellent form from the early stages. He cruised past the first four rounds even though he lost a set to Kachanov, but his movement was fluid, his serve was working well for him, and the fighter mentality we talked about in the first part of this video was on full display, and the Australian crowd was just loving it. His first actual test came against Denis Shapovalov, a great young talent. Rafa owned him the first two sets, but then the Canadian kicked into another gear and roared back to force in a fifth set. Nadal's experience eventually proved to be too much for the young Canadian, as his frustration seemed to cost him the fifth and deciding set. This match is a great example of Rafa's mental toughness. You see a lot of players crack under the pressure of a comeback and end up losing matches, but Rafa has proven time and time again that he can weather any storm. Even after losing his two-set advantage, Rafa's body language was never defeated. Players know that he will never lose his focus and will always fight up to the last point. There has never been a player that is so difficult to beat, and what elevates Rafa's game to legendary is being able to win even when he's having a bad day at the office. Through to the semifinals, Nadal's comeback story started gaining a lot of traction with the Australian crowd, and just like a true champion, he rode the wave of support to easily get past Matteo Berrettini in force to reach his sixth Australian Open final. This was the showdown everyone was waiting for. On one side, you have Daniil Medvedev coming off his first Grand Slam win in New York and playing the best tennis of his career, facing off against the comeback story that everyone was rooting for. The build-up to this match was amazing. Rafa had already won against Medvedev in New York in 2019 after the Russian came back from two sets down, but this time Medvedev had all the momentum. All the odds were in his favor as well, and the critics predicted that the longer the match lasted, the less of a chance Nadal had. Big mistake betting against this Spanish bull. Nadal threw everything at Medvedev in the first two sets and still found himself two sets and three break points down in the third. The Russian just seemed to have all the answers. But then with the crazy support of the crowd, Rafa dug deep into his bag and managed to save all break points and one extra to hold serve in what would prove to be the turning point of a historical match. This key moment in the third set with Nadal down 3-2 to two and facing three break points is vintage Rafa. It's moments like these that give Rafa an edge over Djokovic and Federer in the GOAT debate. 
It's very easy to give up in these moments, and no one would have blamed him. Daniil was playing the best tennis of his career, but Rafa absorbed it and then slowly clawed his way back into the competition. The rest of the match was a classic in almost every point, and after 5 hours and 24 minutes, Rafa threw his racket on the court and celebrated his 21st Grand Slam after coming back from two sets down in the second longest Grand Slam final in the history of the game. Never bet against the Matador. Lesson learned. Nadal then lifted the doll's glorious career and fabled fighting spirit. He mentioned how emotional this win is for him and said it would be one of the wins he would never forget. Okay, enough with the dramatic narration. Let's talk about what this means in the GOAT debate, if anything at all. Just like the Michael Jordan, LeBron James debate, this GOAT debate can get really ugly real fast. But let's not let the fanatics ruin a golden era of tennis shared between three great champions. At the end of the day, going with any of the big three as a GOAT would be a safe bet. But Rafa sure has reminded us this year of his greatness and why he's just a different beast. There's nothing more alluring than an underdog story, and just when we counted Rafa out, he roared back into the debate stronger than ever. There is no question that his mental toughness is the best in the game, or even of all time. He may be close to 36, but his approach and his belief are still as young and agile as ever. So if you want to consider the number of Grand Slams, Rafa is on top right now. Federer is injured and Novak is having a lot of issues playing tournaments due to vaccine mandates. If all remains the same come June, then he won't be able to play the French Open, which as we all know is Rafa's backyard even though Djokovic beat him there in last year's semifinal. But the truth is, there are many more criteria to rate these giants. If you consider head-to-heads, Novak is the GOAT. He leads Nadal 30-28 and Federer 27-23. We can also talk about career-winning percentage, dominance, elegance, and even class. But no matter who you think the GOAT is, one thing is for sure. As tennis fans, we are all very lucky to be living at a time when we can see three giants deliver to their fans at the level these three legends are. All three of them have spoken about how the other two have made them better players, competitors, and ultimately athletes. So for the sake of argument, and as a tribute to all three legends, let's give each his goat surface. Rafa is the goat of clay, Roger is the goat of grass, and Novak is the goat of hard courts. How does that sound? Anyway, enjoy the resurgence of Rafa for now, and let's hope it'll inspire Roger and Novak to give us something special in the slams to come.